Welcome back to Buffalo Times. I'm Nancy Shade. We are up in my studio in the upper part of an old barn and uh, it's restored and I'm really grateful to be here with Jake Lester who is a member of AmeriCorps and he's going to tell us how you become a VISTA worker for the benefit of others. Jake, welcome. Thank you, Nancy. I'm glad to have you here, Thanks. and I'm glad that you can tell us a little bit how you become a VISTA worker. Yeah, um, most people don't, uh, it seems a lot of people don't expect to become um, an AmeriCorps VISTA member, and uh, they find themselves uh, in the position uh, because it's the way for them to uh, grow professionally, it's the way to uh, move to a new area and um, kind of get your footing in a new field like uh, in the nonprofit sector. So for me, I had, I had the experience of coming out of college uh, and looking for jobs in nonprofits. Um, I'm from the Boston area, so I initially looked in Boston and uh, applied to a few different nonprofits, uh, nonprofit positions like programs coordinator or um, outreach manager, um, positions like that. And, and what I started seeing more and more was that the positions that looked like the most interesting um, types of work and the most interesting, at the most interesting organizations were always AmeriCorps positions. So by, for me, by looking around at different organizations, I noticed that they all had AmeriCorps VISTA members and decided that I should apply to um, to a few positions that were volunteer positions through AmeriCorps. So first you went and were interested in VISTA. Can you explain to us what VISTA is? So VISTA is um, is a basically a category of AmeriCorps volunteers. So AmeriCorps is a program of the Corporation for National and Community Service and um, they have a few different sectors within, within AmeriCorps and VISTA stands for Volunteers in Service to America. So, um, so VISTA makes up a group of AmeriCorps volunteers across the country. So that's still on the national level. And then beyond the national level, um, each state has their own independent programs uh, that place individuals like myself in nonprofits. So there's a lot of layers to it, uh, but how it, how it generally goes is there's the AmeriCorps umbrella, VISTA is the category of volunteer, and then in a state like Vermont, we have um, Vermont Youth Tomorrow, and, uh, and we have Serve Vermont are a few of the overseeing organizations. And what usually is the age group that is involved with this? Uh, for the AmeriCorps uh, volunteers? So there's, a, there's definitely a range of ages, but I find a lot of folks are, are my contemporaries. So they're a, few, a year or a few years out of, um, out of school, whether that's high school or college, and, or they're in their early 20s. And um, there are some other folks who are AmeriCorps volunteers who have had uh, long-time careers. They've had 10 or 15 years of, of a career and they've decided that it's time for them to change it up and try something completely different. So, so yeah. the first person a young person would call would be AmeriCorps and then they'd direct you, direct you to the VISTA aspect of their organization and then you get to choose where you want to go or 
anywhere so, in America you could go? So there's, um, yeah, so there's positions like in, I think, almost every state. And um, some states have a lot of AmeriCorps positions and some have fewer. Uh, Vermont happens to be a state with a lot of AmeriCorps involvement. Um, but it actually would uh, typically kind of go the opposite direction where you might find uh, an AmeriCorps position listed at a specific organization. So for me, that organization was Wonder Arts in Greensboro. And I saw that position and I applied to specifically that position. Um, but I found it through the Vermont Youth Tomorrow AmeriCorps website. So, um, so there's the, um, so there's the uh, set of, of positions throughout the state of Vermont um, that I saw in a list and I, and I saw the one that fit the most with my interests. So, so there's a few different ways to go about it, but I think the, the best process is often to start your involvement with AmeriCorps, start getting information from them if you're interested in being a, a volunteer, and they start um, sending you positions, uh, and they can be all across the country, and you can narrow down what region you want to be in or what state and find positions like that. Um, and then from there, once you, once you know where you want to apply, you have the choice of where you go specifically. Uh, you know, I applied directly to Wonder Arts and I, and I interviewed with Wonder Arts and with AmeriCorps. Um, and, and through that process, I knew I was interested in coming to, to Greensboro. Well, that is wonderful. I'm so glad that you found them. Are you enjoying the being there? Yeah, um, I've been serving since August, uh, and so a few months in, I'm uh, settled in a little bit more and feeling uh, established and productive. And um, there's uh, there's certainly a lot of variation in the type of work I'm doing, and so. Um, some days I meet with community members and I get to know the, the area and the people that make it special and other days I'm uh, at the computer. Uh, so, so there's a lot of variation and, uh, but, but at this point it's feeling good to settle in and have somewhat of a routine and feel a little more established. In and you helped me uh, print out a painting that I needed mm -hmm. printed. But you also have a 3D printer. You have a, is it a, a G-Clay printer that you used to do my work? Yeah, that's a photo printer, a large format inkjet photo printer. And you joined Spark in order to participate in that. As a community member, yes. As so a community member, I had to jo join Spark, mm -hmm. and that's $40 Yes, a, um, a month. Well, so the... Uh, in uh, in midwinter, we'll be changing the membership structure a little bit, and we'll have more um, uh, tiers and categories of of membership. And so we don't know exactly what um, those will be yet, but we'll have a a family membership, an individual membership, um, a membership for students, uh, which will be a little bit. Um, less expensive and and um, that way we'll hopefully be able to involve a lot of different uh, folks in the space. And you're also doing some teaching uh, this coming month, aren't you? In November, aren't, don't you have some scheduled teachings? Mm -hmm. Are they mostly about technology or? Yeah, um, so throughout October and, and November, we have a series of classes, and they range from um, hands-on uh, tech, like technology-based uh, skills, like 3D printing or 3D modeling, mm -hmm. um, where you can learn to use uh, computer-aided design software and and make prototypes. It ranges from that to a class about um, grant writing and. Uh, asking for uh, financial investments from, from stakeholders. So that way people can get a sense for um, 
building their own business and skills they might uh, they might seek to learn about as they start their journey with a nonprofit, uh, running a nonprofit or a small business. So, with wonder and wisdom, is Spark an offshoot of wonder and wisdom? So, um, so Spark is a project of Wonder Arts. Uh, I see. And, wonder Arts. And Wonder Arts is that merge of wonder and wisdom and the art house. Wonderful. Uh, so, so Spark operates somewhat independently, um, but in, under the wing of Wonder Arts as, a, as an organization. So how would you recommend people uh, have the opportunity to come and work there? So, What's, what is the best access plan? Yeah, um, it depends on how people are interested in being involved. Uh, one of the best ways to start is to look at our classes and where those can be found um, those can be found on the wonder arts website which is wonderartsvt.org under sparks um, they're on the main calendar they're so, on the main calendar so there's okay. a calendar there uh, which has all the wonder arts classes and has all the spark classes i have to ask um, all these questions because people make it sound so easy to to connect absolutely and but there you have to keep persevering until you get to the connection that you want to um, relate to. Exactly. So okay. there's a little bit, and, and as we're in the beta phase, um, we're sort of working everything out. Uh, there's a little bit of um, collaboration between us and uh, community members. And we, you know, we welcome folks like you saying, it was hard to find the calendar, or, or it was, uh, you know, it would be easier if I could um, see this in a poster or posted somewhere, you know, that, that type of feedback really helps us. So, um, so right now, the best way to find our classes and our, uh, is on the Wonder Arts website. Good. Um, and then the other way to be involved is to come down during open hours. And open hours are um, uh, in the afternoons, Tuesday through Thursday, for, uh, starting at 2 p.m. until 5 or 6 and um, on Fridays, we're open in the, in the morning at 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. So coming actually to the space, to the physical space, uh, is a nice way to just connect and, and get more information and kind of have your bearings. Uh, and that physical space is in the basement of the United Church? Church of Christ, of yes. Of Christ. And you go in the side door up a set of staircase and go down the steps to the right, yes. correct? So that's in at 165 Wilson Ave in Greensboro. Thank you. Um, uh, right in the, in the center of Greensboro. Okay. So there's a, there's a sign that says Wonder Arts on the outside uh, next to the I've door. I've seen that, that's really nice. It's a bit small, but it's- um, It's perfect. But it's the good, it's the indicator that you're in the right- And there's a in the place right to park. White church. You can park right up there on that level. Exactly. The same where the door is to go downstairs. Exactly. Well, that's really good. Um, something else I was wondering was, um, do you, when you get a home to live in, how do the people that have the home offer that space to you if they have a room and do you get a stipend for your work? Mm -hmm. So um, serving with AmeriCorps, uh, you so, sort of start your service with a network of people and, um, and that's both other AmeriCorps uh, volunteers and the AmeriCorps uh, overseeing organizations. So is that a training period? That's training, yeah. And so, how long is that? Well, so I actually started um, service at Wonder Arts uh, with, uh, after a, what's, what they call a virtual member orientation. And so that's an online um, set of classes and um, orientation materials that we go through. And so, so you we, were already here when you started your training? So I started my training at home uh, back in Massachusetts where I took some online classes that was uh, fairly brief and communicated with the organization um, being the organization being Vermont Youth Tomorrow. Was it difficult? Uh, no, no, that was that was fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. So um, so they they really help you through each 
uh, part of that. And um, it's actually not a huge amount of time uh, that goes into the virtual member orientation. There's a few things you do to just understand uh, how to start service, you know, who to, who to communicate with for questions. Um, and they're always, uh, at, at Vermont Youth Tomorrow, they're always really receptive to cl questions and um, clarification that um, a new volunteer like me might have. So well, what are some of the other opportunities? Can, can you do agriculture? Can you do, mm -hmm. what are the different levels of um, offerings that they present to you? you? You were interested in the art aspect, is that correct? Yeah, so I was interested in arts and engagement with youth. And Wonder Arts is the, the perfect place to do that. Um, but other AmeriCorps volunteers, even in this area, are in agriculture. Um, they're in city planning and um, uh, public service. Uh, uh, there is folks in um, alcohol and drug rehabilitation centers. Um, there's folks in in other uh, youth uh, programs, so uh, after school programs, uh, summer camps. Uh, there's a huge, a huge variety of, of Opportunity. opportunities. And, and most of the members I know are in something to do with youth, that's serving um, youth. And but, that's why we're here today. Yeah. Because we're really trying to address the youth in, in Vermont, as well as especially in Hardwick, because sometimes everybody doesn't want to go to college, mm -hmm. or they can't, or they, they want to have an experience before they go to college, where they're getting educated in some way. So I he I'm hearing from you that y they educated you at w Wonder and Wisdom directly after you went through this other process of discovering where you wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? So, yeah, so once I started at Wonder Arts, there was a Wonder um, Arts. There was the uh, kind of a learning period of what the organization does, who it serves, um, and what the community here, uh, uh, what the community here needs for in involvement from Wonder Arts and what it contributes to Wonder Arts' mission. So, how does Wonder Arts go from the really young? to people my age? That's a good question. They're, I won't tell you how old I am. <laughs> they're, pretty, they're pretty amazing at, um, at serving. I, the the uh, mission is to serve kids from age zero to adults to age infinity. <laughs> that's, that's good um, news. <laughs> which, is, which is really cool. And so... Well, there's, those are the people that sort of need the technology the, the most because they're getting it in high school mm -hmm. free. The kids yeah. are getting a free education because of, you know, everybody pays their taxes. So mm -hmm. I always say to them, I, I hope you're doing well in school because this is the last time you're going to get a free education. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so to take advantage of learning the computer while you're in school and understanding that they're really doing a good job with that, mm -hmm. aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's the children and the adults who are trying to keep up with the rest of the world yeah. and do business yeah. um, that really do appreciate that sort of guidance yeah, as absolutely. much as they can get. Because, and it's constantly changing, isn't it? The, mm -hmm. the whole uh, technology world is just so f rapid mm -hmm. in development. And uh, they don't give you lessons when you buy a $1,000 iPhone. <laughs> That's true. They, yeah. <laughs> They don't give you a how-to. Uh -huh. So the, the, all the how-tos are what it sounds like Spark is, is helping to address. Am I, am I sort yeah. of right about that? Hopefully. Um, yeah, everything from uh, computer repair, like simple computer repair, or there's an issue with um, my computer. What is it? Uh, we have community members who uh, like Nate Leroux of Flip Vermont, who are volunteering their time to teach classes, or they're um, he's he's good at that. Yeah, so they they might teach. He you know he's great at anything from simple computer questions to super complex ones. Uh, but then also so many specialty um, specialty uh, things like website design or 
um, Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, those, um, you know, that software or those skills can really help people who have the basic skills but want to, um, you know, create a website for their business or take their, you know, take their knowledge um, to a place where it can be applied in a really useful way. I think this is really going to grow. And yeah. it's only, it's only how old, maybe six months old? Or? The, the idea was, the idea was created um, about a year ago in November, last November, but the spark uh, existing as a, as a entity is, yeah, less than six months, I would say. That's good. Um, so it's, it's really in its early incubation sta stages. <laughs> so back to Vista, um, do you feel like they're always available to you? And also, um, how do you find, if someone wanted to go to Montana, mm -hmm. how do they decide where to live or how to live? It's Yeah, so Vista um, has a lot of supports in, in those fields, like where to live, and, and, but especially in how to live. Um, for me, uh, finding a place to live was very straightforward because there was a um, there's a family who has involvement with Wonder Arts uh, and has um, been involved with the organization for years, and so they offered their uh, they offered a room for rent um, directly to me as the AmeriCorps volunteer at Wonder Arts. So it was it was one continuous process. There wasn't, there wasn't a separate process that I went through to find a place to live. It was, I found, um, you know, that I would serve with Wonder Arts and that I could live with, uh, with the family I'm with now. That's not the case for everybody, uh, but um, with living and also um, affording food and utilities and rent with the living stipend that comes from uh, AmeriCorps, and navigating social support networks um, and settling into a new area. Those are all uh, things that AmeriCorps helps a huge amount with. So somebody who's say 18 or 19, they would feel secure in being able to uh, venture further out knowing that they have that um, that extra support from AmeriCorps. There's definitely, you know, I, I can't speak for everybody's um, comfort level with with that, but there's certainly a a scaffolding and a and a net um, and a support, like you said, from from the organizations that oversee um, volunteers like me, and and they they will help figure everything out, and it can be challenging for the individual at times, but. Um, but yeah, knowing that there's someone to ask questions to and someone to, um, who's, who's been through it before and uh, you know, understands the process really, really well uh, of, of living in a new place or living on a, on a um, modest stipend, that, that helps so much. So it takes a, a certain amount of perseverance as well. You have to keep going until mm -hmm. you finally find the fit. Absolutely. I mean, um, I know of some volunteers who are in their second year of service or um, have been hired by organizations after their year of service mm -hmm. um, or ha who have done a year of service and gone into a completely different field or career path. So, so for some people, they find their fit and they find their, you know, they find their sweet spot through AmeriCorps. And for others, they learn about they learn about themselves and are challenged, and persevere through it, and then go a totally different direction in the future. But no matter what, it just is um, it is something that will go on your resume someday, as a volunteer, but also as a person who's willing to serve and grow in whatever field that you have attached to. Exactly. And you're still free to go into other areas of, exactly. of life. But it, it's, it's, um, it seems perfect for people who just really want to start venturing out and experimenting um, with interests yeah. to see where it can take them. But I know 
I mean, as a young person, I, I started working in a dress shop at 15, and I taught swimming, I sold flowers, I worked in greenhouses, I, I, I did everything to earn enough. I traveled alone to Europe for four months when I was 21, but, you know, that's an adult. And so um, it's the, all those experiences, even horseback riding, I never dreamed I would teach swimming. I never dreamed I would take people on trail rides. Mm -hmm. I never dreamed that when I drove through Willsville Welfare or worked at Please Touch Museum, that it would be a resume. Today, they explain to people that these things are good for a resume for yeah, your future. Absolutely. But to the, in those days, they, they never, it just happened that mm -hmm. way, that um, I ended up using things that I had done when I lived at home and I didn't have to support myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and I learned uh, later, earned a living doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't a great living, and, but it was enough to never have to ask for a loan or help or somebody to pay my rent until I was 45 years old. Mm -hmm. And so it really was very um, wonderful to just grow along with balancing what you do as work to earn money and then also what you do as volunteer work. And volunteer work comes and goes in your life when you can afford to do it. Mm -hmm. And but it sounds like AmeriCorps really sets you up so that you can you can really um, explore well without uh, too much jeopardy. Uh, absolutely. So to leave high school and to go into that, I I think it's a great opportunity. It wasn't there when I was young. Um, uh, Mr. Kennedy had just started the Peace Corps. Uh -huh. So the Peace Corps, and that was out of the country. Mm -hmm. But when my father was young, they had the CC camps. Well, mm -hmm. he, it was, he, was, he was working as a grown man by then almost. But they had CC camps. And I know that um, where the Traps used to have their singing camp was a CC camp. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Charlie Lord, they took in all these young people, young men, and um, they, did you know about this? Not, uh, I, I, I know about the Civilian Conservation Corps. The but, Civilian um, Conservation Corps was really good. But not at traps. Well, yeah, well they had one there. Cool. Uh, because they were working and cutting trees. Mm -hmm. And so they had one there, and the young men who were starving, some of them in the cities, because it was the depression years, and the parents couldn't even afford to keep them. So they went off and joined, and they got three square meals a day. They exercised, they, did, they learned to work, they learned a new area, and they sent money home and they kept money. Yeah. So they were feeling like they were supporting people as well. And for some, it probably wasn't, didn't work, but for most of them, it really did work. Yeah. And it really taught them something, and it turned them into young men. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, World War II started, and a lot of those young men joined the, 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 the uh, cause. Mm -hmm. So it's, it seems that this is more of a peaceful and constructive and internal um, obligation. Do you then... Uh, are you un, you're not we don't have um, a military anymore where you are asked you are told you have to join the military right well um, you still uh, as an 18 year old register for register for selective service well does this uh, help you to not have to go into the military is this part of the selective service I have no idea actually um, we're I'm thankful to be of a generation that um, can has the choice to uh, join the armed forces um, and, or not, and so um, I, I actually don't know the details of, of of how AmeriCorps relates of being a national service member um, through AmeriCorps relates to being in the armed forces. I would think it would be either or. Yeah, I, mean, I have no I, idea. I think that you know, if you're doing this, then you wouldn't be required to go into the military, mm -hmm. but if pe some people love the military and they'd rather be in military, some people love their country so much they want to add and help the youth to grow into healthy, uh, mm -hmm. constructive people. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity and I hope any young people who are out there will realize um, the benefit of this AmeriCorps vi uh, vi Vista. Vista 
um, opportunity and think about it because you've got a big life ahead of you and it's no more free education yeah. <laughs> after 12th grade. That's sort of it, unless you get scholarships. So keep working while you can, right? Thank Absolutely. you so much for coming. I really appreciate you My sharing. Pleasure. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the, to the youth of um, Vermont? I, just, I think that there's, there is an opportunity to um, uh, learn about yourself and about your communities through AmeriCorps. So uh, consider it. Thank you.